Hello, as you can see, I've got some before photographs and then after photographs there. So if you're looking to create a similar look, then please follow this video. The client's hair is short already, so um, you can pre-wash the hair. As you can see, I have just damped it down using a water spray just to make sure that every single strand of hair is wet. And then the most important thing I find with short haircuts is sectioning the hair. I always create a halo section around, um, it's normally like from around temple all the way around the back of the crown to the other side of the temple as well. Keeping that up and out the way. And that way you can see that whatever you do underneath, even if you take it a little bit too short than what you wanted to, you know that you've got the length on top that you haven't touched yet and you can kind of blend that in. Um, the thing with short hair is that it does grow really, really quickly. Um, at the beginning part, what I'm gonna do is just create a guideline on the nape. So cutting that round and then I'm pulling up horizontal sections to give me a little bit of a guideline so that I can actually pull out my vertical sections, cutting it into the palm of my hand and um, following the guideline from the bottom. I will work round in orange sections, making sure that every single strand is cut. The video is speeded up a little bit and I can only apologise, my video in is not the best, but um, you can see definitely one side of the haircut being done. Making sure that you follow the guideline, don't miss any strands, and we are just cutting the underneath hair. So everything that is left on top, do not touch that as of yet. If your client would like it really short at the bottom, you can also go in with the clippers and you can, um, I would start off at a number three and just clipper just the nape area up to the occipital bone, no higher than that. Um, I tend to find if you go higher than that, then your haircut will start to look more masculine than feminine. Could be a choice that your client does want. Some areas I can point cut as well, just to give it a little bit of texturization. And then obviously at the end, just making sure that you balance check everything, because there's nothing worse than doing all your sections, following all your guidelines, going round the head, and then you check your balance left to right and it's uneven. So then you have to go back in again and uh, create the balance. Now, always double check with your client whether they want the hair cut over the ear so that they can actually see the, their ear or if they actually want the hair cut over the ear so that their ear is hidden. This particular client wanted to grow the side bits of her hair so she wants it left at that little bit longer. So the length is left that little bit longer and you're just angling it out very slightly so that it starts off short, gradually gets longer as you go round. Checking your balance points, making sure left and right is exactly the same. Now I'm quite happy with the back section, so I'm gonna go straight in with my top bit. Sometimes you might find the top bit there's hardly anything at all to take off, which is perfectly fine. Sometimes you might want to just take the corners off. Like I say, this client doesn't want too much off the length. She wants to grow it, but yet yeah, it's just getting that little bit untidy. Taking um, sections so that you can see your guideline. Most clients want to grow their hair, but nine times out of 10, once it starts to get long on top, they find it very flat. 
So then they want shorter layers put back in on top. And that's where the kind of mullet look takes place. So texturizing the hair, point cutting, maybe put it, putting the thinning scissors through the top bit, that will help lift that top section. Now I'm taking panels and pulling it back. If you pull it back towards the crown, what it does, it, it makes it longer at the front. If I pull it up towards the ceiling, I'm going to be cutting more off the hair, so therefore it'll make it shorter. So I'm pulling it right back to try and meet a guideline. Just blending in the sides to the top section with a little bit of point cutting. And I'll continue that all the way to the forehead. Just having a quick look at the hair, going through the centre panel, cross checking it again, making sure that it's all even. Cross checking, you're just simply going the opposite way to the way that you cut. So I cut the hair from behind, so I'm just checking it now from the sides. It doesn't take two minutes to check your cut. And the last thing you want is for your client to go to the next hairdresser and for the hairdresser to turn around and go, oh my God, who cut your hair? And then straight away you've lost a client. So just combing through the hair now, just making sure that there's no overhang, there's no straight lines, everything is blended. Some people might like a step. Um, like I say, you can even shave the underneath as well, around the sides if you wanted it left short. And you can kind of have a disconnected haircut on top. But always start off at the bottom and work your way up. This technique I'm doing now is called slicing. And as you can see, it's a form of texturizing that is. Making it a little bit thinner in certain areas, taking out the bulk. And that's what makes you different to another hairdresser, especially a newly qualified hairdresser they possibly wouldn't have the confidence to go in and slice. So you've got to be able to do that. Now, the client's hair is nearly finished now and you're gonna dry the hair. Obviously choose what kind of brush that you'd like to dry the hair with. The nape area is far too short to have a brush, regardless of what size brush you've got. You don't really want to be doing any brush work at the bottom. It's just a finger dry. As you go up the head, you might be able to scoop in a, a vent brush, or if you prefer using a round brush or a heat retaining brush. Always best to put in products. Now the products that you put in, um, need to be able to support the hair. A lot of clients don't like products. Oh, I don't like products, don't put anything on my hair, but it's just going to be flat. So put in a bit of mousse. They haven't got to take it home with them, they haven't got to buy it, but put a little bit of mousse in and then that will give you some support. So as you can see, I just finger dried the bottom of the hair and I'm using a round brush now. I don't want too much volume on this client's hair. As much as it is poker straight, if I was to let it dry naturally, you don't want it too different because the last thing you want is them to go home and just wash their hair because they absolutely hate it. So round brush blow drying from the crown all the way back.
This brush is quite a big brush actually for the length of hair. But yeah, I'm not trying to get a curl. I'm just trying to get some volume in there. So the bigger the brush, the more volume that you get. So I normally have my hair dryer on the highest heat and the fastest speed. The preference is yours. I always have a nozzle. It just helps direct the airflow that little bit more. So once I've done up to the crown area, then what I normally would do is clip the hair up and work from the fringe backwards, trying to blend in the sections. until all of the hair is completely dry. What's also nice if maybe you could teach your client how to do this look or um, some people can't use a, a brush and a hairdryer at the same time. So you have um, tools now that you could buy possibly in Argos or any department store where well, it's like a hot airbrush. So it's a brush that has hot air coming out of it and they can create this look with one hand. So there's been quite a lot of volume created. This mousse that I used is um, from L'Oreal. It's the, the white one, the extra firm mousse. Always good for short hair. And it's not sticky as well. Talk to your client, make sure that you know what direction that they want to go in at the front. Um, my client has never used straightening irons before, so I thought I'd give her a little bit of a treat and put the straightening irons on her hair. Giving it a little bit of a bend, I don't think she would have personally have liked it poker straight. Like you could have actually created nice little curls similar to um, tongue in hair with the straightening irons. So I'm just smoothing it down in areas that need. I'm curling more around the back. You can see that I can give it a nice bend around the back. Just using, using regular GHDs, nothing special. until the look is completed. And then just confirm really with your client at the end that they're happy with everything. And then you can use your best hairspray. I tend to use, uh, I do like the pink silhouette bottle, um, but I'm using the black silhouette today just to give it a nice firm hold. If you did want to glue it, then the Freeze and Shine from Paul Mitchell is really good to really glue the hair. And when you spray, always rub kind of your fingers in there just to separate the hair strands and make it just look that little bit more effective. The client was happy at the end of the day and that's what it's about. Hope you enjoyed.